the pattern in the culture is to be willing to kind of fudge on the truth a little bit for the sake of a higher goal. Mm. That's kind of the way our culture works. The truth is kind of the lesser goal. And if it helps you get what your agenda wants, mm. then it's great. You can use it. If it doesn't, then you kind of adjust it a little bit. This is where we have to really fight what the culture is teaching us. The truth has to be yeah. the highest thing. We, there is no adjusting the truth for mm. a higher goal because if God is truth, we can't fudge on the truth. So yeah. when the temptation comes, I think this part, part of this comes back to what you were saying about trusting God, Robbie, earlier. What we need to do is realize that we're not going to persuade everyone. And so we can't sacrifice other things for that sake. We need to put truth in its proper mm. place. And one thing that really helps with that is to have the goal be clarity. So your goal is to make your position as clear as possible. If they can understand, or at least if you've expressed it clearly, then you have succeeded in speaking the truth. And there's value in that, even if they aren't persuaded, because we are glorifying God every time hmm. we speak the truth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it, that that's, this is all like a really good discussion, you know, the, the, how truth is prominence. And we, in the process, like we, we have to view, like it goes back to, in my opinion, to viewing people appropriately, right? Um, we, we have to first defend truth, right? So we always defend truth. We speak our message clearly, um, you know, and, and the words that we use will sometimes be offensive. I mean, Greg always mm -hmm. says that the gospel is offensive enough. There's no need to add any offense to it, right? I love that saying. You know, but we need to remain resolute, even in the face of offense. And and but in that same time, we don't we don't have license as Christians to be uh, unloving, nasty. We don't have uh, license to be to be mean spirited. Um, but we also, I think, it, it, this is as an apologist. This is a for me at least, it feels like kind of a tightrope that we have to walk because we also can't give in to the cultural pressures uh, to compromise our message in any way. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to stay salty. You know, and, and, you know, and in the process, like, this is, this is why I think it's important to view. This is why they, uh, like, bringing it back kind of the very beginning, Amy, what you said about viewing people. If you view people appropriately, it helps you remain level headed uh, in all circumstances. It helps you understand that the, the world around us is going to be illogical. It's going to be uh, irrational. It's going to be sometimes, guys, it's going to be the, the people around us that are in the world are going to be incapable of having civil discourse. Like it's, it, it's just not part, it's not part of who they are because they're, they're living in darkness, you know? So, so they're, they're wandering around in darkness. Of course, they're going to start bumping into things. And I think when we view people like that, it really helps us. I'm not saying we pity people, but it helps us view uh, people in, in, in that light. And, uh, and then it allows us to defend truth in a way that's, that's loving and compassionate. Um, you know, and, and I mean, uh, Paul, I think it's second Timothy somewhere that Paul says, uh, that we, we correct people with gentleness. And then he says, why? So that God may grant them repentance mm. and the knowledge of the truth. That's good. And I think that's really, really important uh, for us to remember. I think so. One of the verses that I have constantly battled to live up to, and I never will live up to this perfectly, but I think about it a lot is, is John 1.14. Where it says the word became flesh and dwelt among us. We saw his glory, glory as the only begotten from the father, full of grace and truth. And the biggest mistakes I see people make <clears throat> with apologetics is when they're all grace and no truth. And that'd be, you know, progressive Christianity <laughs> or whatever, or they're all truth with no grace. And that's when I see a lot of Christians who, who know doctrine, but then they adopt the tactics of the world. Mm -hmm. And they name call back and they own people back. And and I think if we're following Jesus, being full of grace and truth is kind of a, a barometer for how we're supposed to approach ministry and approach apologetics. And and, and that is something, man, I, I do not have the balance of that I want to. But I, I think that's the goal is full of grace and truth, those two things together. Mm -hmm. And we've all seen mistakes made when you have one without the other. And I think it's easy to have one without the other, to be honest. I think it's difficult to have both of them balancing each other out. Yeah, I <clears throat> when you were saying that, I I thought back to um, uh, Acts seventeen, where Paul 
is standing there amongst the the people and he he says um men of athens i perceive that in every way you are very religious and as i pass along observe the objects of your worship you know he he doesn't call them idols he calls them objects of worship yeah. but i perceive Kind. that you guys are very religious Compliments. you know not yeah. you guys are a bunch of pagans you know this kind of thing <laughs> There's this, there is this grace that he comes in there and he doesn't, he doesn't compromise the truth, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and uh, you're right. There is a kind of, you know, in, in our world, there might be some that want to just lean heavy on the truth and neglect the gentleness and the respect and those other, those other character components. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know for me, that's what I, I mean, I'm drawn towards the truth aspect, just the way God has made me. Mm -hmm. And then that other stuff is sometimes it gets left out. Um, so, I, I mean, we all need to kind of look inside and say, where do I need to um, change in order to better reflect Christ, who is full of grace and truth? Yeah. Can I add Absolutely. something on top of that? Like, yeah. this is a really good point, too. You guys are so smart. So <laughs> See, when you're, you're talking gracious about... to us right now. Wow. That's awesome. But you guys really are. Good like, example, you're sparking John. so much in my mind as you're, as you're <laughs> speaking about this stuff, because like oftentimes I feel like as, as apologists, we can get caught up in the arguments mm -hmm. and the truth. And we forget about uh, falling in love with Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you know, we um, we love to we love to debate. We love to to argue. Well, I love to debate. I love to argue. I love to use reason. Um, but it, without fostering a a deep appreciation and and love for Christ, um, I'm, I'm I think it'd be, it's more difficult for for us as apologists to approach the conversation in yeah. in a right manner. You know, because when you start to love Christ, you start to love the things that Christ loves. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and, and Christ loves, it goes back to people, you know, and, and he doesn't uh, compromise on truth ever. But, um, but I think above, above all of what we're talking about, it feels like, uh, th 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 we need a proper, uh, love and appreciation for Christ. And that's our motivation. Mm -hmm. And when that's our motivation, I think it helps us uh, navigate the conversation, uh, appropriately. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that makes any sense. John, that is exactly where I was going to take this actually. Because yes. the question is how... If Amy <laughs> thinks it's right, it's right. 100%. Because yeah. the, the big question here is, how do we become that kind of person? This kind of person that we're talking yeah. about. And here's where I think I see the biggest problem happening among people who are into apologetics. And that is, they're so into thinking about the arguments and the questions and the philosophy and they kind of lose the balance of actually cultivating a relationship with a person. That's, that's what this is all about. We're supposed mm. to know Jesus. We're supposed to spend time with him. Yes. And that's, that's why we're doing all of this and being with him. And, and by that, I mean praying and also reading about him, reading the Bible, putting that in its proper place. That is what will shape us. The Holy Spirit will shape us through those things into becoming a person who's more like Jesus. So it's so tempting to get uh, kind of caught up in all of the philosophy and then you leave that aside. And then I end up getting emails from people saying, I've, you know, I've lost this desire for apologetics and um, now I just have so many questions and what's happened in my relationship with Jesus has cooled. Well, that's mm -hmm. going to happen with any relationship if you're not spending time in it. And so That's right. we need to be really careful that we are putting that first and keeping that in balance with these other ideas.